You know, we wanted to have a session on immunotherapy because of the hype it's received across all of oncology. And I think certainly at many of our professional meetings, that they're really um, packed sessions where people really want to learn more about what therapies are available. And I think for those of us who treat neuroendocrine tumors, we're really interested in seeing if that's a, a valid therapeutic option for our patients. And so we invited Patrick Ott from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute to come speak. He's a melanoma expert. And really melanoma has pioneered the use of immunotherapy agents and he gave just some historical background on how those therapies were developed in melanoma um, also in in, um, in lung cancer um, using really some of the checkpoint inhibitors as a paradigm so including things like the anti pd1 pdl1 and anti ctla4 inhibitors that are the check checkpoint inhibitors, some of which have been approved, like nivolumab, ipilimumab, um, and pembrolizumab, and then gave us some sense of perhaps where we could fit nets into that, into that paradigm. And I think that we've seen this, there's this classic figure that's shown around about the mutation load um, in these tumors. And the ones like melanoma and lung cancer typically have a very high mutation load. And it's been thought that that mutation load is what leads to antigen presentation and thus makes these immune sensitive tumors. And so I think we were worried because the carcinoid and neuroendocrine tumors fall lower on that mutation load figure. And um, though there may be some ways of overcoming that and making these traditionally what are thought to be immune sensitive tumor, or immune resistant tumors into immune sensitive tumors. Um, so some of the thoughts that I think he raised and um, Diane Reedy who gave some case presentations also raised was around these combination therapies that perhaps that could overcome the lack of mutation load. So things like dual checkpoint inhibition or using other immunotherapies like IDO inhibitors or or radiation that may also stimulate the release of antigens or even cytotoxic chemotherapies. So I think it was really intended to be thought-provoking. We don't have really much data in the way of um, net patients treated on immunotherapies. There were a handful of cases that Dr. Reedy shared um, that were patients, for example, with small cell lung cancer who had been treated on some of the basket studies um, in ph phase one. And um, I think it really just left most of us thinking, you know, what, what, what would our ideal clinical trial design be to look at this? Um, there is a fair amount of interest in the net field. Um, we have a few clinical trials in development, both at UPenn um, with Dr. Metz um, and myself at Stanford. Um, at Stanford, we're developing a phase one, two study that's looking at intratumoral ipilimumab and anti pdl one in combination. Um, that's yet to open, um, but I think will provide us um, certainly with some more safety information around combination therapy and about some early efficacy information.